All right, fifth graders, I am going to walk you through this skill um, to do a little bit of review, remind you of some of the strategies and tips that we've learned so far this year. Uh, and this skill, of course, is adding and subtracting decimal numbers. Okay, the first skill that I, that I mentioned earlier in the year and that I think is really important um, is giving, giving your problems context, right? And by that, I mean giving it a real life story. I mean, give it some application here because math is absurd if we're just doing it for the sake of math, at least in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there are mathematicians and people who are much smarter than me that would disagree. I guess that's okay. Um, I'm just a lowly fifth grade teacher. But we consider um, we can consider this a, uh, a problem that has to do with money. Right. And you can create any story you want with this. I mean, this could tell any number of stories. You had seventy nine dollars and eleven cents and you chose to buy an item that cost you fourteen dollars and eighty six cents. Right. That would be the same as subtracting fourteen and eighty six hundredths from seventy nine dollars and eleven cents. Right. Or from eleven hundredths. So that gives a little bit of context, um, helps us kind of connect our brains with reality. Um, the next thing I'm going to recommend is that you do some estimation, right? Come up with a ballpark of what this problem can, uh, is going to be close to. That way, if you miscalculate and you're way off when you finally complete the subtraction problem, you have it. To com you, you can compare it to your um, estimation, and then you can say, "Oh, I'm off. I'm going to have to go back and figure out where I miscalculated." And chances are, if you did, you'll see it pretty quickly and say, "Oh." Yep, I, I added a place column or a place value, or I didn't line up my decimals. So thing, the thing is, though, that these problems are pretty easy because guess what? The decimals are lined up for you. And because of that, that means they're just basically your simple addition and subtraction problems. OK, but I do want to illustrate what's actually going on, because I think that if we get in the habit of just going through the motions and remembering the steps of carrying and borrowing or whatever, then, then we've lost the, the whole point of math. We want to be able to use what we know to arrive at an answer that we don't know yet. Okay. So we can estimate by rounding these two numbers. Okay. I look at these two numbers and I think, Ew, those are some funky numbers to, to do some estimating with. So let's round them to some nice, round numbers that are easy to do some mental math with. Okay. So I look at this and I think whew, pretty dang close to 80, right? $79 and 11 cents. Yeah, it's pretty close. Of course, it's closer to 79 than it is to 80, but we're just trying to get a rough estimate. So that's okay. So we'll consider that 80 and then we'll consider this 15, $15 is very close to $14 and 86 cents. You're only I mean, you're only a dime and 14 or four pennies away from being $15, in fact. And so if we do that, then we have a much, I think at least, a much simpler subtraction problem. So $80 minus $15, right? Um, we could even think of deconstructing 15, which of course is one group of 10 and five groups of one. So 10 and five. So why don't we, you could do it either way. You could first start with taking the five away in your head and five back from 80, of course, is 75. And then take the 10 away from that 75 and you'd be at 65. Or you could start with taking the 10 away, which puts you down at 70. And then take that five away and gets you to 65. Okay. So either way, you've arrived at your estimate of 65. You know that your answer is going to be somewhere in that area. In fact, you could even get a little more specific if you understood that by getting your numbers, you rounded up both, both of these values. You rounded up, you rounded up by almost a dollar right here, right? 89 hundredths or 89 cents. I don't know what that is, but we'll call it 89 cents and uh, next to nothing, right? 14 cents, you rounded up. So you you rounded this up um, by this total amount. So you can tell that it's not going to be 65. It's going to be less than 65 because we have to account for this amount that 
we rounded up wasn't there. So by accounting for that, we can further estimate that, hey, it's going to be it's going to be less than 65, right? But probably not much more than probably not much less than 65. I mean, this is this is a this is a dollar, right? Roughly a dollar. So we're going to be somewhere in the ballpark between 63 and 65, right? With some change left over likely. So that gives us a really accurate estimate. And then we can go into doing the standard algorithm here uh, with some confidence that even if we mess up, we can look back at this and, and say, hmm, I need to go back. Or if we're right in, right in the target zone, we can be confident. So we can't take six hundredths away from one hundredth, right? So we're going to need to borrow from our tenths place, of which we have one group of one tenth. So we're just going to take that entire tenth and bring it over here, which of course is going to give us 11 hundredths. And that gives us enough to take 6 hundredths away. So we'll be left with 5 hundredths, right? I promise that's a 5. Um, and then of course, this is, this is gone. We don't have any tenths left. Oh no, what will we do? All right, because we can't take 8 tenths away from no tenths. That's impossible. But we do have 9 ones, right? Which is the same as 90 tenths. We have plenty of tenths to lend. Okay. So let's just, all we need to do is lend, we need to borrow one. So let's borrow one from this and that would knock us down here to eight tenths. Okay. And now we've got, boom, enough to take, take away over here. Um, man, my, Marker is all messy. So 10 minus 8 is 2. Okay, look at that. Nice even quarter. All right. And of course, we're knocked down to, to 8 ones over here. And we can take 4 away from 8, which is going to be 4. And look at that. 7 minus 1, of course, is 6. And we are right in the ballpark. All right. We knew it was going to be less than 65 knew it was going to be less than $65, okay? So $64.25, we should feel confident that that is our answer, right? So let's go with it. Uh-oh. I um, demonstrated a very important problem or a mistake. I was quick, too quick with my keyboard and it didn't, didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, which is a great way for me to show you. This is really one of those times that you can just quickly say, got it right now. If I had if, it, clearly, if I had meant to type in 4625, then probably I'd have to go back and look at what I had done wrong. Okay. But for the purposes of moving on, yeah, we got it. Okay. Uh, let's just do one more. All right. Same thing here. It's nice that we're starting with just two place values um, in our decimals. Okay. In our decimal numbers. Again, we can use the context of money and we can look at our two values and let's do some estimating. Uh, $8.97. Yeah, you're right. That is really close to $9, right? Yeah, nine dollars, and then five dollars and seventy-three cents. Well, that's certainly closer to six dollars than it is to five dollars. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, nine plus six is fifteen. So our estimate is going to be around fifteen dollars. And of course, if we wanted to get a little more specific, we added three hundredths or three cents in order to estimate. 897. Um, and then we, of course, added 27 cents to estimate 573, which got us $9.06. Okay. So we know that by rounding up, we need to account for the values that, that weren't actually there. And if we add 3 cents to 27 cents, we're, of course, going to get 30 hundredths. 
or 30 cents or 3 tenths, right? So we know that we're going to be around $15, but less than $15, exactly. Well, we could even calculate it from here, right? If we were to take 30 cents away from $15, right? We would be left with $14 and 70 cents, right? We've got no change here to, to subtract. So we're going to have to borrow from our dollar spot, which of course we have one. So that would essentially be $100 minus 30, which is 70. And we're left with $14 and 70 cents. Let's see if that checks out. Okay. I'm going to go the opposite way now to see if I can avoid my last mistake. All right. Let's see if my estimation skills are spot on. Ooh, they are. That is impressive. All right. That's enough from me. Hopefully that will give you a little boost. Um, some of you stopped watching a long time ago um, because you were either bored or you already know this stuff. Either way, good for you. Um, thank you for those who have stayed. Um, your life is improved for it. Good luck. See you in class.